I think uh, Archie, we sort of touched a bit on this before, but um, well, I think well Jason touched on it before <laughs> about um, God, that, that covers a lot. About uh, this is from Russell Semler. Oh. Glad to hear, hear Lee is getting better and out of the hospital. So am I. Love how you guys break Maddie's balls constantly. <laughs> really funny, boys. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the upcoming... You're obvious, Maddie, you're obviously if you just caress him. Yeah. Caress him, <laughs> give him a tickle rather than break him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, you'll take anything. Yeah. Um, what are your th guys' thoughts on the upcoming film Bigger, the Joe Weider story? Oh, shit. All the best... Oh... I didn't even know there was a movie about Joe. Nor did I really, but is that the one that um, Cullum's in, and that? Playing Arnold and Sergio's son playing Sergio, is that the movie? I've quite, I honestly didn't know, so... Well, well, no, do I, I, I know they're doing a movie, so I just figured that might have been it, but if not, I have no clue. And have you got any... What, what's your best Joe Weider story? I don't really have many, really, because he's always good with me. At the time, I was in his office and he was talking to his attorney, Bernard Cartoon, that was his name, Cartoon. And Joe was saying something and his attorney was swearing at him, blah, 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 fuck you, Joe, this and I'm thinking, wow, he must have some shit on Joe for Joe to put up with that and not fire him. He was on speakerphone swearing and going off at Joe and Joe's just like, mm. So, and then another time I was doing a photo shoot I had oil on and this girl had to sit across my shoulders doing the splits. I had to do that pose with my arms out like that and Joe's like, hold it early, sit up straight, flex your abs, do this, do that all. In the meantime, fucking oil's going everywhere and the girl's always going to fall off and split her head open. No, but I always got on good with Joe. I used to go have lunch with Joe and Ed Connors from Gold's Gym. And he always hears stories about Joe and this and that, people saying he was gay and this and that, but never, never once did he come across that way or anything like that, but Ben, it is story, more stories about Ben than Joe, but and Joe was always fine, I used to like going up to Joe's office and hanging out and chatting with him and stuff, and he just really loved bodybuilding and wanted to see the guys do well. And are the stories true that, um, you know, when he, was he a billionaire or, or? He would have been, he would have been in the millions, easy, I think. When they sold publication, they sold for like three hundred something million. When they sold Weida publications, so but they would have been a pretty pretty well into the multi millions. Easy, really, really easy. That's why I always say because they had that much money, they could have easily put a couple of million into some sort of retirement fund or health fund for all the athletes that helped make that money. Yeah, but you know when I say stuff like that, I get in trouble. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I got in trouble once and had to apologise because I said um, Ben Weeder was on crack, smoking crack, because he kept talking about getting the bodybuilding into the Olympic Games. I said he's got to be smoking crack. I got in so much trouble for that, but yet I said, how's it any different from when Jay Cutler said that he was going to beat Ronnie Coleman and Ronnie said that Jay must be smoking crack? So it was just a joke. They keep talking now about getting bodybuilding in the Olympics and Every Mr. Olympia, Ben would give the speech about it and I said, oh, I've got to be smoking crack. And because I said that, I got into a lot of trouble. And how did you have to deliver the apology? I think it had to be by a letter, so somebody else wrote it. Like you didn't have to formally go in there and <laughs> on, a, on a bended knee? Uh -huh. With some crack? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. No. I went, fuck an hell. How sensitive could somebody be? I said it smiling and joking in the video, but oh well, what can you do? I think Ben, ben actually had one of Napoleon's hats. He used to collect stuff like that. And then Joe had a lot of Remington statues. He liked artwork and stuff, so I think we've had tons of, probably millions of dollars worth of collectible art. And when did they, they sell? We the publications. I don't know. It was a while back now, wasn't it? It'd be on the internet somewhere. Because now, because that's when they sold out to, was it 
Pekka. I mean, yeah, the one that owns the Inquirer and all that sort of stuff. Multimedia, American media, or whatever, wherever it is, they're still owning now. Yeah, because if they they sold it for three hundred million back then, <laughs> that's a lot of money in today's terms. Yeah, so, yeah, I would. We just were very well off, I think. That's for sure. I guess it's almost like the UFC, where you know there's been complaints by the athletes that the the money hasn't really trickled down trickled, trickled down and the now some sports that don't that's the funny thing it's like you think a sport like UFC it would because they've got so much following and the huge yeah. crowds and how big it is that it would whereas bodybuilding is just this small niche thing where it's like they didn't want the bodybuilders to get too much money I have because you know if money comes power and if you're getting mm. paid millions you could be like you know what fuck you or you know, if you're just getting thrown breadcrumbs, you think, fuck, I have to go compete again to make try and make some money or I have to compete to try to do this. Whereas if you made enough money competing over a couple of years, you'd be like, you know what, I'm retired. i got money, I can sit back now and retire. So this way the guys pretty much couldn't retire. They had to keep fucking competing and keep doing shows and getting breadcrumbs thrown to them. So that was it. They had a monopoly on the whole thing. Yeah, no, we, when you say 300 million, it's, um, it's, uh, and I guess too, it's a bit like the UFC as far as, um, yeah, bodybuilding's not that, um, popular in certain countries, Mm -hmm. but, you know, like the UFC. So you always hear that, you know, they're making this money, you hear supplement companies are a billion dollar business, supplement companies and stuff, but they'll cry poor and say, we can't give out contracts, but you can be sponsored by us and we'll give you 10% off our products and a t-shirt you can wear. Yeah. It's like, fuck off. Yeah. Some of these companies even here in Australia say they sponsor people, but like I said, their sponsorship is giving you a discount and you wear a fucking t-shirt for them. That's not sponsorship. That's mm. like fucking petty. Yeah. Petty fucking bullshit. Yeah. You get more from the fucking Sally's. <laughs> Yeah. St. Vinny's would give you more fucking hell. At least they give you a free fucking meal at lunch and dinner. And if you're a bodybuilder, that's more important than a fucking t shirt and 10% off your protein. Shit. Oh, well, we'll have to, um, we'll have to wait for the, the, uh, the finished product. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's good to hear that Callum's got a jersey with, uh, acting and <laughs> yes he's playing Arnold I think if, if that's the one I, I did see something he was in something and I saw a picture of Sergio Oliva's son so whether that's it I guess it was the Joe Weider story those two would be in it so hmm. I wonder if Paul Graham will get in it 